First story. My entitled girlfriend begged me to reconcile after hiding the fact that she had cheated on her previous boyfriend and was still friends with the affair partner whom she currently cheating on me with. So, I broke up with her. Now, she offers to cut ties with him if we reconcile. Nine months later, she showed up with her new boyfriend, so I exposed her affairs and ended their relationship. Now I'm happy. Me 26 and my ex-girlfriend 25 were together for about a year. Some weeks ago, we were hanging out with some of her friends, not the friend in question. We were playing a little quiz game, and one of the questions that popped up involved cheating. I mentioned that I hate cheaters, and after that, I noticed one of the friends give my ex-girlfriend a look, and also noticed my girlfriend got a bit uncomfortable. It was weird and got me thinking. The next day, I asked my ex-girlfriend about it. She said that she wasn't going to lie and admitted that she cheated on her ex. This was a year before she met me. I felt upset about it, because she's never mentioned it before, and I asked what happened. She mentioned that one time she got drunk and hooked up with her friend. Let's call him Blake. Blake is a former FWB of hers, and they still hang out regularly. I knew that my ex-girlfriend and Blake had a history. And while I didn't like that they hung out, I just dealt with it. I was pretty upset. Because not only did I find out she was a cheater, but she still hung out with the guy. I told her I needed some time to think, and after two days, I decided to break up with her. I didn't want to tell her that she can't be friends with Blake, and I knew I couldn't deal with her still being friends with him, so I just removed myself. So, Ada. OP's responses. Detective Essendon 281. NTA. I would have given her a chance to cut off her friendship with B to see if she was cool with that. I'd have no idea how much she values his friendship. Most FWBS are not called from the starting squad, if you know what I mean. Still, you're not me, so you do you. I'd not be able to wonder if she got a little too drunk again, while she was out with friends to be comfortable with her still hanging out with him. OP, from my POV. She already made the choice when she chose to hang out with him despite being with me. I didn't know all the facts, but she did. I don't want to be with someone who wants to hang out with someone they cheated with. Basically, if she can't tell why this is such an issue without me having to point it out, we shouldn't be together. Ebener 13. Nope. He didn't make her F up. She F it up. NTA. You have the right to feel uncomfortable with her being friends with B. But also, it sounds like you don't trust her. That is why you needed to break up with her. I am still friends with someone I cheated on an ex with. I have not cheated on my current partner after 14 years. Cheating has roots in not getting what you need from a partner and looking elsewhere. Not justifying, just speaking truth. But just because a person cheats on one partner does not automatically mean they will cheat again. People can mature, learn, regret, change, and add to their needs. Also, people can choose and have a better partner who gives them what they need out of a relationship. Granted. I do know there are people who are serial cheaters, but one incident does not a serial make. OP. F off with that. If you're not getting what you need from a partner, then break up. I hope your current partner never fails to provide what you need. I bet the person you cheated with wouldn't mind, though, specifically since you're still in touch. By a large majority, OP was voted NTA. Update. 16 days later. Since so many people took interest last time, I figured I'd update you all. So about a week after I posted my original post, my ex-girlfriend dropped by my place. She said that she wanted to get back together, and that it was silly of us to break up over this. I told her that I'm just not comfortable with her friendship with Blake. She said that her cheating with Blake was a mistake. But that was in the past, and she's grown. I told her that it doesn't really look like it. She goes out drinking with Blake very often. And you two were effing after you and your ex broke up. They were FWB before, and after her ex. I told her, I'm just not taking a chance to be her next sucker. She then said, What if I cut off Blake? Can we get back together then? I was tempted for a second, to be honest. Our relationship seemed great. But I remembered some of the comments I read in my last post, and I asked her, Have you been effing Blake since we broke up? I had never seen such a poor poker face. She stumbled her words and said no. I gave her a look like, That's BS. She saw this and said, I mean, we were broken up. I just put my hands up and said, nope. I then asked her to leave. She was really upset. Update. Nine months later. It's been kind of a long time since I first posted about my ex. I actually ran into her at a party recently. We talked and were cordial. We didn't talk about Blake, but she was with someone else at the party. She was uncomfortable with me meeting her new guy. 
I managed to catch him alone later, and told him about Blake. His reaction was pretty tame. He was like, SHT, really? Well, thanks for letting me know. I don't know what happened after that, but I wasted too much time with my ex. I figured I should help the next guy out. As for me, something I didn't realize is how damn good it feels not to have to worry about my girlfriend anymore. I'll be honest, even before finding out about the cheating, I never felt quite comfortable with her going out drinking with Blake. But now, I feel effing amazing. I don't have to worry about my girlfriend anymore, and I wish I had left her sooner. I'm still dating around, and there have been ups and downs, but being single at this moment feels so much better than any time I spent with my ex. Second story. Redditors forged OP's jello spine into a silver one after he danced to his entitled cheating wife's music all his life for the sake of their son, who has now divorced his wife, punching her affair partner. Secret voices note. OP's first update gives off such a doormat vibe. But hang on. Guys OP decided to open his eyes after Redditors woke him up with their lovingly harsh words. Hi everyone, strap in for a doozy. To give some much needed context to this situation, I 27M met my now wife 27F via a dating app in late 2015. We spoke for a month before meeting in person for the first time where I asked her to be my girlfriend. She said yes, and we were long distance for three years before moving in together in 2018. I moved away from my family and friends, and we found a house in the same town she was already living in. I proposed the following year, and then we got married in 2020, and then started trying for a baby. It took some time, and the pregnancy was very rough for my wife and ended up being a C-section. But our son was born in October 2021, and is now nearly three years old. This is where things get complicated. Leading up to our wedding, one of the bridesmaid sisters had a boyfriend who came to the wedding as their plus one. My wife ended up becoming friends with said boyfriend. A few months after we had gotten married, they were getting closer, and people started to comment on it, and me not wanting to be an overbearing jealous husband just passed it off as people of different genders can just be friends, right? Some more context on what I think drew them together is that myself and my wife are very introverted people, with her being slightly more outgoing. I prefer to stay home rather than go out, and on my part, I may not have been putting in enough effort on organizing dates outside of the house. My impression at the time was that we enjoyed doing things at home, and now she had a friend to go do outdoor things with. They got closer over time and were best friends during the time we were trying for a baby. People would keep commenting, and I would brush it off to try and be supportive of her having a close friend, as she had in the past struggled to make friends that I could relate to. They clashed heads quite a lot, and I would often be a shoulder to cry on, and at one point they stopped being friends altogether, and given how upset she was, it seemed almost like a breakup. They became friends again, and one night while they were out together, I saw she had not logged out of Facebook and stupidly decided to snoop on their messages. It revealed he was in love with her, and that she had developed feelings too, but was not acting on them because of me. I confronted her about this, and she had said he had confessed before, and she had turned him down, causing them to stop being friends. But they had become friends again on the understanding that it would be just friends. But she too then developed feelings. I wanted to trust her, so I left it at that. Come October 2021, close to Halloween, our son had been born, and my work was going out for a few drinks. After we did a quiz in the office, we ended up meeting with my wife, my sister-in-law, the best friend, and a few others. Despite my usual dislike for places like clubs, I somehow was there, and the mix of alcohol and the whispers of colleagues and friends in my ear about how the best friend was being too close with my wife stoked up a rage in me. This came to a head when my friends and colleagues were making an effort to split my wife and the best friend up, and to bring my wife and me together. This upset the best friend, and he was going to leave the club. My wife followed and one more comment about how I should go after two because, it wasn't right. It set my rage over the edge, and I went down and saw them sitting on a sofa embracing in a goodbye, which to my angry drunken mind was too much. I told the best friend it was time to leave, and he got up, and then I punched him in the face. We got separated by the club staff, and I left the club very quickly, and walked all the way home, suddenly very sober. The next few days revealed more of their relationship. My wife convinced him not to call the police on me, and she was up in the air about leaving me because my punching of him put into question how safe I was as a person. Mind you, I had never punched anyone before, and I hate confrontation, as you'll see more in this post. She had revealed that whilst they had not engaged in full ons ex, they had been intimate in other ways, but had stopped once she was heavily pregnant with our son. She had been feeling guilty for a while, 
and they had not resumed what they were doing once our son was born. She had said that she had been unfaithful, and that the trust was gone. I wanted to stay together, and rebuild our trust, because I still very much loved her, and wanted my son to have a family that was whole. We talked it out, and agreed to stay together, and that she would go back to being actual friends with a best friend, who during all this was trying to convince her to leave me and be with him instead, which was not plausible anyway as he lived with his parents, and currently had no job so could not provide for anyone. A few days after the whole ordeal myself, my wife and him all had a conversation, and he presented her with an ultimatum to him or me. My wife is notorious for being terrible at communication. It can be very difficult to get any kind of response out of her. She just wants you to do all the talking and figure out what you want. But the best friend wanted to hear it from her, specifically him or me. We sat and waited for a while in silence. She chose me in silence, but he wanted her to say it out loud that she was done with him romantically and she eventually did, and I thought that was the end of it. The best friend, and I shared a weird hug. I'm not quite sure why maybe some subconscious apology to me for how he had come into our lives and turned it all upside down. Despite my wife saying she was done with him romantically, they remained friends, but not for long. My wife was continuously guilty because she would occasionally slip up and kiss him. Me being the dolt, I am excused these mess-ups for the sack of trying to keep our relationship intact and our family whole. A few months after this, she broached the subject of an open relationship in a way she could have all she wanted with none of the guilt or consequences. I could tell she was struggling. We were both very tired from looking after a baby, and she had suffered very hard with postnatal depression and had suffered depression at the start of our relationship and prior. She had gotten a lot better and was off her medication by the time we were engaged and getting married. But the pregnancy plus, this whole weird love triangle had brought her right back. So being the idiot. I agreed to an open relationship to make her happy. This open relationship lasted until around April of this year. She was happy having her family life with husband and child with me, and then her outgoing fun part of life with a best friend. I did not see another woman during this, as I was committed to my wife, even if she wasn't fully committed to me. My main reasoning for sticking this out was mostly for the sake of my son. I wanted him to have a proper family, and I just wanted a simple family life. The other part was fear or shame. If I left it would all come out and everyone would know. I have a good relationship with my in-laws, and my family is currently planning to move down to where we are, because they want to spend more time with my son. If I leave, it will ruin so many relationships, and I fear the blame will be on me for not stopping it sooner. So I soldiered on even though I was miserable most of the time. I did it for my son and my family so they might be happy, and seeing them happy would help me forget, or at least block it out. So during this whole open relationship, while our side was fine, we had family trips and holidays, and my wife and I were still able to be intimate with each other in the very rare times that our child allowed us to be. She wasted no time having us ex with a best friend. They would go out in the evenings a few times a week, and sometimes go away for weekends together. He did not like hearing my name, even being mentioned, so when they were together, I'm sure they pretended like I didn't exist. They had even taken our son for day trips to farms and soft play when I was working. And that is one of the few times I had the guts to say something and say that he was my son, and that the family stuff should remain with the actual family. Myself hearing his name was quite the opposite. Whenever they fought, or had some kind of disagreement, I was the shoulder to cry on, and the empathetic listener, as any suggestions fell on deaf ears. Whenever I felt close to caving and leaving, my son would float into my mind, and it would stop me every time. In April, this all came to an end. She had said they'd been fighting more and more. He was spending more time on his phone when he was with her, and this resulted in her half-heartedly breaking up with him to try and rouse something out of him. But he took her at her word and broke up with her. She backpedaled and tried getting him back, but he ended up making no contact with her. She was inconsolable for weeks, and I was there as always to pick up the pieces. While she was physically ill and cried, I and her parents looked after my son. She had attempted a few more times to reach out to him, and each time this relapsed her progress in getting over him. She had even tried to go back to being just friends, but either he couldn't do that or didn't want to. They had met a few times with my son as some kind of intermediary to force them to not be intimate if such a feeling arose. But after that he said he couldn't be just friends and fully cut her off again, and she blocked him on everything. I finally felt some sense of relief, like my efforts had been rewarded somehow. By staying, I now finally had my family back. We could all move on, and my life would finally be normal again. Now that it is almost September, she, to take her mind off of him, has gotten into writing spiritual journals 
and has also started her own business. She was in childcare before going full stay at home, but she is now using her qualifications from childcare for her own business, and it has been doing very well. I've been very supportive and even helped with purchasing a domain, setting emails, and a website. My issue now is that I don't think she loves me the same anymore. The last time she and the best friend were intimate was when she was very emotionally vulnerable and going off what she said. He took advantage of this, and they had us ex before he then dumped her. This had a factor in her being physically ill, but she had wanted to be intimate with me again so that the last time she had us ex wasn't that time, which understandably was traumatic for her. She had taken the time she needed, and we were intimate again. After a few more times of being intimate, she said she didn't want to have SX anymore and sourced one of her mom's friends as an example and said, X and Y don't have sex. It wasn't like we had the chance to be intimate very often, but I always tried to initiate when I thought the time was right. But no became the answer going forward. I was told X isn't the whole relationship, and I understood that. But I had communicated that intimacy was part of how I showed love. We have not had us X since and I cannot get anything more from her than cuddling and a peck on the lips type of kiss. I was feeling insecure because of this and tried to discuss this with her. I felt unhappy and unsure about where we were in the relationship. She had said that things were fine, and we were staying together for our son. I said it was more than that for me because I still loved her the same. She had asked if I wanted to split up, and I asked her if she loved me, and she said she did, and as usual, my heart was not in it and I couldn't commit to what would be the harder decision of leaving and decided to stay. I fear she is staying because it's the easy option, or because she has no choice since her other option left her. She may be hopeful that the best friend will return into her life, and then she will leave me. I had asked her if he came back, would she leave me for him? And she said she didn't know it would depend on the situation at the time. I had made my stance clear that if he came back in any form, I was done and would leave. Now I am still feeling just as stuck or trapped as I felt during the open relationship. I am a good husband and father. I stuck with her during her difficult pregnancy. I went to all the scans and appointments post-birth. I've been actively involved with raising my son. I work Monday to Friday, but I take over in the evenings before he goes to bed. I'm cooking most of the time, and when she does cook, it's normally just freezer meals when I'm making meals from scratch with fresh ingredients. Her main gripe, which drove her to the best friend originally, was that we never went on dates outside of the house. But she never expressed this to me, so how could I have known? I said that you should have told me, and I could have done something, not gone and slept with someone else and had a whole weird love triangle thing. I am actively trying to put more effort into dates. A lot is going on, so we don't really have a lot of time for date nights out on a whim, because we need to organize child care. I know that wasn't the case before we had a kid, but again, it wasn't communicated to me and us both being introverted. I thought we were perfectly good at home. COVID lockdowns may not have helped too, but I had attempted a few dates after lockdowns were clear. I feel like now anything I do is just going to be a comparison to the best friend, and that I'm only doing it because they were doing it together. Even after everything, I still love my wife, but I don't know if it is the same way anymore. I'm actively trying to put an effort in, but I don't think it's being returned. But everything I try and express that we don't get anywhere and continue on going. She has never wanted to be the one to make decisions. She's let this whole thing play out, and it took the best friend making the decision himself for their relationship to end. Does it have to be me that makes the decision here? If I leave, where do either of us go? Where does my son go? And how much more will change or be ruined as a result of my choice? I've had no one to turn to, and I've tossed this whole thing around in my mind for the past few years, thinking, why is it down to me to do this? I let the open relationship happen to avoid consequences, and to keep everyone but myself happy, and I'm still doing it now. Can I be happy again? Truly happy with my family, if I continue to stick it out and put the effort in. Will my wife see me and love me how she used to? Or is she too hung up still on the best friend, and is waiting for him to come back so she can leave me? Or am I forced to leave? My priority is my son. I want what's best for him, and I've been content in my misery to be able to see him as much as I do, so happy. If I leave, I may not get to see him as much. I only currently see him after I finish work and on the weekends. I love my wife, and I want her to be happy. But have I sacrificed my feelings for others too much? Is this the one time I've got to put myself first and leave? If you've made this this far, thank you. I hope it makes sense. I am very stuck and lost and many other things and need some help. And I've been asking for it for too long, either to save myself from a truth. I don't want to hear or to spare my family and friends from all of this. TLDR 
Wife and I have been together for eight years. We have a kid. But there was a whole affair up in relationship that happened. And I feel stuck and unsure how to feel go forward in the marriage. Update. Hello everyone. This is an update to this post. I don't think I've been so grilled in my life. But boy did I need it. I think I needed to be beaten down from a place outside of my own head for it to really get through without any excuses or justifications being made up in my mind. This is very real, unfortunately. It is very sad and pathetic, and I am very broken and need fixing. Everyone who has said get a paternity test, he is mine. He couldn't look more like me if he tried, but the soon-to-be ex-wife and the other one didn't have his ex until he was already born. They were courteous enough to wait for Mr. Dormat to lay down and open the relationship. Of course they could be lying, but I think given she wants to be with him more than me, the child being his would be a good way out. Thank you for the truth and the harsh words. If anyone needs a new doormat, I am clearly a prize to behold. I apologize for the length of the original post. I had so much stored and wanted to air it all out. But for those who read it all, read halfway, or didn't read it all, I still gave the clear advice of leave. Thank you. I do need therapy, and I need to be alone for a while before I can love again. It's coming up to nine years, and that's a long time, and you could say a lot of time wasted with false hope that things would improve, but I see now it's over. The one good thing to come of it is my son, and I see now staying will do him no good in the long term. I had finished work and picked my son up from my in-laws after having dinner as she was out for the day with her sibling. I got him ready for bed and read him stories, and he went to sleep. I could not. I kept reopening the original post, looking through the comments all unanimously saying to leave. Recently, about 30 minutes ago, she came home, and I had a brief conversation with her. I said we should split up, and she agreed. I said that I hadn't felt respected in a long time, and this felt more like a friendship or roommates than a marriage anymore. It felt like I was the safe option to hold on to, not out of love but for safety and ease. I had thought about all the comments about the effects the continuation of this would have on my son and expressed as much. I had felt walked over and disrespected and I couldn't raise my son that way. I can't be the father he needs if I am not the man I should be. She left and started to get teary before she left, which I didn't expect as she had rarely shown much of a care the last time I half attempted to convey my feelings of the relationship. So maybe she does care more than I thought, but not enough to undo everything that's happened. She has gone to sleep at her parents, and I am now alone in my house with my son. Now everything will change, but it will be for the better. However long it takes. I'm going to try and get some sleep. TLDR, I'm done, and it's over. We will divorce. Third story. My entitled sister destroyed my PS4 games and refused to pay me for not giving her a birthday present or attending her birthday party. My entitled parents took her side, blaming me and saying it should teach me a lesson. I don't know why my whole family hates me. Long story short, I'll try to keep it short. Edit. I'm 17 male. Forgot to mention that in the title. My sister, we'll call her Pa Primary Antagonist, for the purposes of this story. A couple of days ago, she had a birthday party. She was turning 18. It was a pretty big party at our home, and lots of her friends and relatives were invited. Pa has told me about her upcoming party for a while. She's been excited about turning 18 all year. Anyway, I'm not really one for parties. I don't look forward to them, nor do I enjoy them. There were a bunch of her friends and mates there whom I don't particularly like as well as relatives whom I don't particularly like either. I came out for cake and to say hi and greet people, but that was about it. I spent most of my time in my room playing games on my PS4. The whole time she kept popping in, asking when I was going to go join the party. I kept telling her I'd be there soon, but I lost track of time and never ended up joining in. Nor did I really want to. I don't like the people there, and I'm not sure why she insisted on me saying hi. The icing on the cake was that I didn't buy her a birthday gift either. Now I should point out that I don't really have much money. I have a part-time job that I make a meager amount of pay from, and I use it mostly to buy stuff for myself, like electronics and gaming equipment, games, etc. I had made it clear for her a while back that I probably wouldn't be able to afford her a gift, but I don't know why she was still expecting one. She has a job and has far more money than I do. For my birthday earlier this year, I told her clearly I didn't want a gift. But she still went and bought one anyway, even though I had clearly said I didn't want one. It was some disgusting R shirt that I'd never wear anyway. I'll admit, I've been kind of shut in for a while. When I'm not in classes or at work, I'm at home playing games 
and I rarely interact with my family. They always tell me to come out of my room and engage more, but it's never really happened. I just don't get along with them well, and I wish they'd leave it at that. After her birthday party, she was clearly not happy. She went into a rage and started screaming about how I'm a useless, pathetic, loser, and how I've failed at life because I have no friends. In the process of her stomping rampage, she intentionally broke three of my games to teach me a lesson, supposedly. I was furious and, honestly, had to calm myself and hold myself back from hitting her. I went to my parents and told them everything she had done. Later she was crying and apologetic, and they said I had to forgive her. I told them she has to pay up around $300 and both she and my parents said that was ridiculous. That was the amount of money I'd spent on the game, approximately. My parents said maybe that was a lesson for me, and I'd learn from my mistakes and try to engage with the real world more. I told them all that unless she pays up. I'm not speaking to them ever again. And they said that was fine by them. I think this is ridiculous. They expect me to incur the losses of her crazy rampage when I already hardly make enough money, whereas she's the one who broke it, and she should have enough money to pay for it. Even if she doesn't, which she does, it's still her responsibility. I get that maybe I'm not the nicest person, and I could do more to interact with them not ignore them. But that doesn't justify breaking someone's things. TLDR. Sister broke my video games, worth around $300. I said she has to pay up, but she refused. Parents say she doesn't have to. I'm giving them the silent treatment until they pay up, but I'm not sure what else I can do. Any advice would be appreciated. Edit. Okay, I realize I'm a SHT brother and a SHT human being. I took a deep look at myself and I even cried a little bit. I'm going to apologize to my sister first thing tomorrow morning. Thanks for your comments, including the tough love. I will update when I can. Update. Okay guys, so I know it's been a while since I made the first post, like three weeks ago. I actually resolved this issue like two weeks ago, but I wasn't really going to make a post about it. But I showed my sister the post and some of the comments, and she convinced me to make an update post explaining what happened. Well, after I made the last post, I got a lot of comments. Some supportive, others. Less so. I was feeling pretty bad, and I'll admit I was a jerk to my sister. I was feeling pretty bad, and I realized I really should go and apologize to her. Unfortunately, it was the middle of the night, and I didn't want to wake her up. I couldn't sleep, however, so I decided to go and wake her up and apologize to her. I went to her bedroom and roused her awake. She was really tired and bewildered. I told her I was sorry for being such a selfish, inconsiderate jerk, and that I really did love her. She replied with a half-asleep MK, and told me to go back to bed. I think when she realized I'd been crying, she realized I was serious. We had a bit of a talk, and she told me not to worry. She was sorry too. Everything can be sorted out, and we can talk again in the morning. Then she told me to go back to sleep. So I went back to sleep and we had a talk the next day. I basically told her I'm sorry for being such an arse to her on her birthday, and I think my video games caused me to forget about the outside world and the passing of time. I think like when I play, I just forget myself, and time passes without me even realizing it. I told her I should have set aside the games the entire day and just spent the birthday with her, no matter how much I initially didn't want to. I then made a pledge to cut down on gaming and spend more time with my family. She was really happy to hear this. She said she couldn't believe what she was hearing, like I was suddenly a new person or had an epiphany. She gave me a hug and once again apologized heavily for having broken my games. She said basically that she felt my gaming habits had stolen her little brother away from her and turned me from a happy kid into a miserable troll that lurks in his dark room. She said she really regretted breaking my games the instant she had done it, and she did it more out of anger for the way they were hurting me and distancing me from her and my family. She was extremely apologetic, and I told her to forget about it. I probably deserved it, and she might have even done me a favor. She told me the reason she had been so upset, and she wanted me at the party, was because next year she is going off to university, and she won't see me much anymore. She doesn't have that much time left to spend with me, and she feels that I don't feel the same way at all, and she is hurt that I'd rather spend these last few months playing games, especially on her birthday. I told her I understood. And that was a really fair judgment that I hadn't considered. She said. You know, us big sisters always have to look out for our little brother. And when we see someone or something that hurts him, we can get a little crazy. Hence why she had broken my games in a fury. I told her I wished there was some way I could make it up to her for missing the party. And we discussed it with my parents. They both told me they were disappointed in me 
but glad that I'd finally realized what my problem was and was trying to rectify it. She said she wants to take us all out to dinner at a nice restaurant, which she'd pay for, as a specifically family-only celebration of her birthday. We did that a week or so later, and it was really nice. I wanted to bring up the issue of the games, but I didn't want to. I had said I'd try to focus less on gaming, and to bring it up would be antithetical. I figured to myself I'd just save the money and buy them again. I don't need to trouble my sister and make her feel bad. She asked me which games they were. I told her forget about it. I didn't even like them very much. I was in my room playing on the PS3 a couple of days later, while she was at work. She walks in and tells me she bought something for me. She shows me three games she bought, and the one that I really liked that she had broken wasn't even one of them. She asked me if they were the right games. I said, well, technically no, but don't worry, it's not important. She then pulled out that specific game from her purse. She had somehow remembered. She'd also bought some multiplayer games and a second controller. She told me that it's unfair that she only asks me to do things that she enjoys. And she should also do things that I enjoy. Also, I showed her my original post some time ago. And we both read through the comments together. We were in a good mood. So thankfully we didn't rage too much. But I told her that I think some of those comments had helped me realize that I was actually being a jerk and was losing my sister through my jerkiness. She convinced me I should write a follow-up post, which I did. It just took me about two weeks to get around to doing. Also, my dad found out she had bought new games, and we were playing together. He was extremely displeased. He said she was just encouraging my bad habits, and she shouldn't have done that. He just stood there shaking his head while she was playing, saying, I hope you don't end up like him, referring to me. TLDR, apologized to my sister. Realized I was being a jerk by ignoring her. She took me and the family out to dinner to compensate for me, missing out on her birthday, and also bought me some new games. Reconciled and promised to spend more time with her, and be less of a video game addicted douche. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.